how do you think these people are going to present the scoliotic patients are going to present deformity is the only presenting symptom many people think that it might be pain no it's never the pain it's never ever pain pain is in fact rare i can share you what happens in particularly idiopathic juvenile or adolescent scoliosis uh, i would say probably in north india holi it's a festival of colors and water and you know uh, 13 year old adolescent is just back home after playing holi and mother says don't come inside just you know you wash yourself and clean yourself maybe on this tap which is outside and he takes off the shirt and suddenly the mother notices that there is some curve in the back and that is when you know it clicks and she is like okay fine today is you know holiday and nobody will be available and next year next next day they go to a doctor and the uh, mother categorically mentions the doctor she's never come he's never complained of any pain doctor says fine i know that pain is never a complaint pain is rare deformity is common rib humps are common paraspinal prominences are common and the moment you see a rib hump or you see a paraspinal uh, muscles which are prominent that means you should think about rotation that uh, rotation has already happened how do you evaluate clinically scoliotic curves should be examined they should be inspected they should be inspected with patience and persistence the only thing is after consent undress the kid and just keep looking at the kid right from the front from the side and from the back i would say the most important part is looking from the back inspecting from the back and the first thing to notice is the level of shoulder you will see an elevated shoulder on one side then you should look for scapula you will see a prominent scapula on the convex side whatever changes i'm going to describe here they usually happen on the convex side and uh, you can see them on your screens as well so this will give you a correlation listening and watching as well so on the convex side not only you have an elevated shoulder you have a prominent spinal curve you have a prominent scapula and you have an uneven wrist and not only that there is a asymmetric arm to flank distance i'm sure you can see that after inspection what comes in our medical curriculum palpation you have a hand hand has a thumb patient has a spine spine has a spinous process you start palpating spinous process because the moment you palpate spinous process you get to know about the alignment in this way you can confirm your uh, uh, inspection findings with palpation and now you start the clinical evaluation the first part to be done in clinical evaluation is the plumb line what is plumb line you take a measuring tape you take or actually we don't take a measuring tape in our post graduation there's a there's a thread which is attached to a heavy weight we call it a plumb line feather or a plumb line thread so you take you can take a measuring tape and on the posterior part i mean on the back of the patient if you draw a line from the occiput that should directly fall uh, into the gluteal cleft or the natal cleft but what is going to happen here i'm sure you can see on the screen that it is slightly laterally deviated it is not coming exactly into the natal cleft after this i will talk about the adams forward bending test which i have though already spoken about you are standing behind a patient the patient is an alleged patient of scoliosis there is a curve that you can see you ask the patient to lean down forward without bending the knee if the curve disappears it is a case of a postural scoliosis if it doesn't rather the rib cage becomes prominent on the convexity it is a scoliotic spine one basic test that we all clinicians do whenever whenever we see a case of scoliosis what is the role of imaging 